Scano, Sego, Ani, Bojo, Bonjour, and good morning, everyone. I just want to say right off the top that it was interesting to see a bunch of people come up here and stand in the middle, and then everyone vacated before I even said a word. And I thought, what, what? Boy, they're leaving before I even get started. And it's a little strange to have this setup we have here, but I know the reason for that. So welcome to Chorus Key for the launch of Canadian Geographic's Indigenous Peoples Atlas of Canada. My name is David Moses, and I am the host of a radio show entitled Moment of Truth on the new First Peoples Radio Network, operating as Element FM in Toronto at 106.5 FM and Ottawa at 95.7 FM. This new radio network will start broadcasting from this building in October. And some of my fellow colleagues are in the room here. If you don't guys just waving your hands there, thank you. Uh, you'll see these people walking around the building. Uh, please welcome them. We're honored to be here, by the way. And I'm honored to be the MC for this event this morning. And should you wish to uh, let your followers know how cool you are, be sure to tag your post with hashtag IndigAtlas. And on the back of the table there, there is uh, some, some uh, links to that and, and around the room uh, also for Twitter, Twitter handles. So I would like to begin by acknowledging that the land on which we are gathered this morning is on the traditional territory of the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, or Six Nations, and the Huron-Wendat peoples. And at this time, I would like to welcome Gary Sue, elder of the Mississaugas of the New Credit First Nation, to the stage to offer a prayer and greetings. Gary. Bonjour. Ogajige Higanin, Indigena Kas, Magazine Adodem, Mississauga and Now, New Credit Dunje. sleep and forget everything. For the fire has been lit. And the doorway, the doorway to understanding is now open. Miigwech. Chimigwech, Gary. Uh, please be seated. We are also uh, joining us from the Mississaugas of the New Credit First Nation is Chief Stacy Laform. Chief Laform has served his community for over 15 years, beginning to the elected council in 1999. Chief Laform is very active throughout the Mississaugas of the New Credit Territory and traditional territory, which encompasses 3.9 million acres of Southern Ontario, including Toronto. Now, not only is he a chief, but he is also a notable storyteller and poet. Chief. Oh, 
I'm nervous. Smile a little. Yes. Make me feel welcome. Thank you, David. Ani, Baju, Nagani, and Nishtabekinini, Stace the Forum, Dizakaz, Credit Dunjaba, Mayinga Dodum, Mississauga, Nishnabe Dal. I told you where I'm from, what my indigenous name is, uh, what my clan is, uh, what I had for breakfast. Uh, how. Well, you don't believe that? Okay, well, I did tell you my name and where I'm from and my clan. See, if I follow my mother, who is a Mohawk lady, then I would be turtle. If I follow my father, who is a wolf, then I would be a wolf. So I've chosen to become a wolf because it's sexy. No, I'm just kidding. You can get in a lot of trouble making those kind of jokes in front of a room full of elders, so I don't recommend it if you, if that happen, if you have that chance. So, since you're talking about the land and an atlas and, you know, the different nations who live upon the land, I'm going to recite something that I wrote from the perspective of my people, but it should become the perspective of all people, and it's called Sacred Trust. We are the keepers of these lands. She shelters and sustains us. Long after the flesh fails the spirit, we will care for these lands. Our drums will be heard upon the wind, our voices in the rustle of the leaves. Our people have a sacred trust for the land, a trust no man may break, a trust that death cannot sever. We were here when you first stepped foot upon this land, and here we will remain long after the last step disturbs your soil. Oh, you can applaud if you like it. You don't. Huh? I'll start you off. Hey, I good. So, so. I'm happy to be here today. I'm honored to be here. You know, this is a, this is a good project based on, on truth and, and, and discussions and the relationship that we are to build in this country must be based on truth. And that is truth of all people. We have asked Canadian society to stand up and face the truth of your history. Well, the indigenous people must do the same as well. We must stand up and face the truth of our history. And we must work together and build a new relationship. I think the idea of the Atlas is a good one. I think it gives you the opportunity to reach a broader audience. Certainly having National Geographic and Kids Can print Press working together gives it a lot of validity and will open a lot of doors. Now, I'd like to say that this is my idea, but I wasn't, so I can't. I'd like to say it, though. So. I look forward to how this goes forward. You know, I anticipate that there will be mistakes and growing pains, but as long as we learn along the way, you know, we can only get better. Now, I know I'm only on a short time frame, but David would look kind of silly pushing the chief of the territory off the stage, so... <laughs> so I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read you something about that... Because you're looking at opening up conversations about indigenous people, understanding who they are, understanding what they're about. I'll just give you a quick glimpse, if I can. No one thing can define us, for we are complex creatures, dreamed in the mind of the Creator. We laugh when we should cry. We cry when we should laugh. We joke when in pain. We smile because tears could consume us. We love unconditionally and totally. We understand that family should come first, yet family is not defined solely by blood. We are quick to anger, yet no one forgives faster. We are loyal and we are strong. When we commit, we are unwavering. We have survived much, but do not mistake adaptation for resignation. You will always see us, for we will always be here, standing for what we believe in, standing beside each other, doing what is right for our children, our future. We remember our obligation to our mother, the earth, and we remember our place upon her. We are a proud people, an honorable people. We do not always do right, for we are human and prone to the follies of humanity. Yet we strive to be better, to make, e to make each other better, to make the world a better place for the children. I know the Creator smiles upon us, no matter where we are or what we do, for the love of a child is unconditional. No matter where life takes you, walk proud. So, even though I wrote that from the perspective of my people, I bet many of you have seen yourself in there. I bet you all saw a piece of yourself inside of that 
that story. And that's important because we're not so different that we can't come together and work together. I think we just realize that we are very similar. We have different histories and different cultures or language, but there's much good that can come from working together and knowing about each other. Now, I, I want to wish this project the best of luck, and I also forgot to acknowledge um, the creator of the world around us and our place within it. I would also like to acknowledge the indigenous and the non-indigenous people who walked the land in the past and those who walk today and welcome you to the treaty lands of the Mississaugas of the credit of the Anishinaabe. So I wish this project a great success. I hope I can be involved and support it in the future. Miigwech. Miigwech, Chief Laform. Um, the, the poem, A Sacred Trust, that uh, Chief just recited, um, I was very honored to be a part of putting together a, a video with the community of New Credit called A Sacred Trust, and that is actually being used in the Peel District, is that right, as, a, as part of an educational tool for the curriculum. So you can check that out online, I think, on uh, the Mississauga's uh, website as well. So now I'd like to welcome Gilles Gagné, who is the Chief Operating Officer of the Royal Canadian Geographical Society and publisher of Canadian Geographic to introduce the Indigenous Peoples Atlas of Canada. Miigwech, David. And miigwech to the Chief and Elder from the Mississaugas. What, a, what an incredible presentation from both of you. Thank you very much for welcome, welcoming us to your territory. All right. Thank you. It's a pleasure for me to be here today at Chorus Key, the home of Kids Can Press, representing Canadian Geographic and the Royal Canadian Geographical Society, celebrating the completion and launch of the Indigenous Peoples Atlas of Canada. Importantly, it's both a personal and professional a source of pride for me to be here today working with Kids Can Press to make sure that our amazing atlas is available to Canadians and to the world. As the country's voice for geography, the Royal Canadian Geographical Society's mandate is to make Canada better known to Canadians and to the world. The Indigenous Peoples, of Atlas, the, the Indigenous Peoples Atlas of Canada tells the story of this land and its peoples in the most important way it has ever been told. It's a multilingual collaborative educational project that is national in scope and the product of incredible contributions made by people from around the country, some of whom are here today. We, had an in, we were talking about the Atlas last night at a, a briefing before today's event, and we counted quickly that there were well over 100 contributors working on this, these books alone, not counting the educational materials. And not, we've never, Canadian Geographic's been around for 90 years, and we have never taken on a project this big or this ambitious or with this many partners. It's been uh, my, I've been with Canadian Geographic for almost 20 years. We've done a lot of incredible projects in that time, and this by far is the most important of all of those projects. Of the group of contributors, um, I'd like to spe specifically acknowledge the invaluable contributions of some who are here today. Educator extraordinaire, Charlene Bearhead, contributing editor, Julian Brave Noisecat, and Aaron Kiley, who as editor-in-chief of Canadian Geographic led the charge to help put this content together into the beautiful books that they are. I must also acknowledge the support of the Ministry of Canadian Heritage and our partners, most importantly, the Assembly of First Nations, the Métis National Council, Inuit Taparit Kanatami, the National Centre for Truth and Reconciliation at INSPIRE. These books, these maps, all of these resources are their stories. We're just happy to have played a part in helping tell them and make them known to Canadians and to the world. As a powerful educational tool, it is clear that the Indigenous Peoples Atlas of Canada will become a foundational step on the path towards reconciliation. As such, the learnings from the Atlas will help ensure that Indigenous voices in every part of this country and throughout the world are heard and understood. Thank you so much for being here and for your engagement on this project. I know that by working with Kids Can Press as our distribution partner, we have brought together two incredible Canadian organizations, and that together we can ensure this vital and unique material reaches as many people as possible. I'd also like to note on a personal level that it's my hope and belief that this will only be the first of many uh, fruitful uh, productions between us and Kids Can Press. Thank you, miigwech.
Merci, Gilles. I'd like to welcome Charlene, educator extraordinaire, bearhead to the stage. Charlene was an instrumental part of the development of the resource materials for the Indigenous Peoples Atlas of Canada. And she was the education lead for the TRC and is currently the education lead for the National Inquiry into Missing and Murdered Indigenous Women and Girls. Charlene. Abwashtet, Opa bin Shawia, Emigabi, Ishni Shadewaka, Ishni Shinamakuche, Ishni Shwichashta, Mrs. Sagas of the New Credit. Just need to acknowledge that I'm a visitor here in your territory from Treaty 6 territory. Thank you for hosting us. We've been waiting for this day. Well, we've been waiting for this day for 180 years, but we've been waiting for this particular day um, for two years now. We've been really excited to, to get to this point where. These incredible resources, the atlas that you've seen, the four volume set, the giant floor map that you will see, the apps, the online resources, we've been waiting for this for two years. Because not only are the students who will be in their schools across this country, in all the different traditional territories, in Inuit, Nunanit, in Métis communities, not only will the children see themselves and their people reflected in such a respectful and meaningful and good way, but non-Indigenous students will be educated with resources that come from authentic Indigenous voice for the first time. But also teachers across the country who, for the most part, want to do the right thing and want to do things in a good way do not have the resources to do that. They will see resources that they've never seen. They'll be educated in a way alongside their students that they never had the opportunity to be educated in that way because of these resources. And so the legacy of this resource, of these resources, of this suite of resources is huge in the four volume set, in the giant floor map, in the 17 lesson plans. But I believe the most important legacy is the process that was followed, that Aaron, who is the editor-in-chief, made a decision, something that he's not used to. But he made a critically important decision that he talks about, and his decision was to have the First Nations make the decisions about what would be in their volume, that the Métis would make the decisions about what's in their volume, that the Inuit would do the same. And that's the only way to do things in a good way. So that has been a gift to be a tiny part of that. Sarah and I were discussing this morning that there were over 100 educators involved in just the education piece alone, which is really reflective of the, of the multiplicity of voice of Indigenous people as well. That hopefully after this, people will stop asking, what is the Indigenous perspective? As if there is an Indigenous perspective. So the content, the context, the approach is like nothing you've ever seen. And that's a gift. This was a gift from the indigenous people who shared their stories, their knowledge, their skills, their practice, their protocol. That was a gift. So I, I ask you, what will you do with that gift? It's about the work in our jobs. It's about being educators, but more importantly, what will you do with that as a mother, as a grandmother, as a father, as an uncle, as a grandfather? The gifts have been offered here. What will you do with that? So the foundational knowledge is embedded throughout these resources, both the hard copy resources and the online and the apps. It's a starting point. But what will that look like when you go home to the territories where your schools sit, where your homes sit, what would that look like to you? So with that, I am excited to be here with you. I'm excited and I'm going to thank you in advance for what you will do with these resources. I would love to encourage everyone across the country to go to the school district office and ask the school district, how many giant floor maps did we buy? I think about going home to Treaty 6 territory Edmonton Public Schools has 202 schools. 
with one giant floor map in that school district, there's not even enough days in the year for the school district to have this resource for a day. When you step onto it, you will know that you should probably have it in your living room, but it might not be big enough because there are things to learn every day. So with that, Ishnish Pinamat, thank you so much. Thank you, Charlene. Uh, is Illyria here? I'm just wondering if Illyria was able to make it. Illyria McKay is uh, Miss Teen Ontario. She's from Six Nations, and she was invited to this event, but I know she also had uh, an orientation for her uh, university this morning at the same time, so I wasn't sure if she was going to be able to make it. I'd also like to uh, pass along regrets for uh, Chief Ava Hill from Six Nations. I know that she was hoping to make it this morning as well. I'd now like to add Julian Brave Noise Cat's perspective. Julian is an enrolled member of the Kenim Lake Band in 100 Mile House, BC. He's a graduate of Columbia University and received a Clarendon scholarship to study global and imperial history at Oxford. Julia, Julian, Julian is a contributing editor of the Atlas as well as a contributing editor of Canadian Geographic. Julian. David, let one boobsman the Elia tick to mich, where Mississaugas of the New Credit First Nation Ulu. We live in an era of reconciliation, but it would take an unprecedented transformation for the immense wrongs perpetuated against our people to be put right. To be to begin, we must peer into the abyss of these injustices. Thousands and perhaps even millions lost their lives to colonization. Some died in pandemics that were preventable. Others were slain in bloody wars. Still others perished in brutal solutions to the so-called Indian problem. The morning greeting in my Sequetmuk language Chukwinuk literally means you survived the night. There were many nights our ancestors and relatives did not survive. Our land was stolen, and with it, our culture and life ways. In recent decades, the Supreme Court and painstaking scholarship have independently confirmed this fact, which to indigenous peoples is as plain as day. Children were abducted and incarcerated first in residential schools and then through the child welfare system. To this day, our people are underrepresented in universities and overrepresented in prisons. In many communities, we cannot drink the water that comes from the tap. A trip to the nearest Indian reserve or inner city where indigenous peoples band together in communities knit with love and hope for brighter days will confirm that ours is neither a just society nor fair country. It would be an egregious mischaracterization, however, to paint the indigenous experience on this land as solely tragedy. There is triumph here too, especially in recent generations. After decades and even centuries of struggle, Self-determination, not assimilation, is a zeitgeist of contemporary indigenous renaissance. We count among our leaders the great Sequetmuk chief, George Manuel. We have our own Michelangelos, like the masterful Bill Reed. Our prodigious literary community includes the lyrical Lee Miracle. We have grandfathers who teach us, aunties who look out for us, cousins who are line mates on the ice, and best friends in school. It is a beautiful and proud thing to be indigenous. It is a beautiful and proud thing to be indigenous. Across Canada and around the world, indigenous peoples are emerging as clever leaders, brilliant artists, and powerful social movements, forces for good, representing communities and values we need more of in this 21st century. 
This atlas brings together voices from First Nations, Métis, and Inuit communities, representing the diversity of intellect and profundity of tragedy, comedy, and triumph in indigenous communities from Tuckeranto to Tuktoyaktuk and Victoria to Val d'Or. It's a tough one. These voices are the warp and weft of the lands from which we come. In my Sequetmuk language, which I had the privilege of learning with my kia, my grandmother, the root suffix for people and place derived from the same ancient word, tmich. But one not, need not study linguistics to recognize that the stories we tell flow from land and people, interdependent and inseparable. More than a century ago, James Tate, a Canadian Shetlander, settled in our interior Salish territories. He visited our people and learned our languages. He became so fluent and knowledgeable that the famed anthropologist Franz Boas recruited him to contribute as ethnographer for the landmark Jessup North expedition. During his time among our ancestors, Tate listened to our stories and reflected upon them. Eventually, he joined our struggle to right enduring wrongs to reclaim our land, and to realize a more just and fair society. Society built nation to nation, government to government, and people to people. It is our hope that the voices of the first peoples gathered in this atlas cause you to reflect and maybe even act as they did for Tate many generations ago. Thank you. Cooks Jim Julian, hope I didn't uh, butcher that too much. Our final speaker for this morning is Lisa Lyons Johnson. She is president of acclaimed award-winning children's publisher, Kids Can Press, who is the distribution partner for the Atlas, Lisa. Gwetch, David. Thank you so much to our friends from Mississaugas of the New Credit First Nation for your warm welcome this morning. Such a treat. And thank you to Chorus's Diversity and Inclusion Council for co-hosting this event in our beautiful atrium. How wonderful to see you all here this morning for this important celebration, the launch of the Indigenous Peoples Atlas of Canada. This gorgeous four-volume set of books can be more accurately described as an encyclopedia with sections on the history, languages, traditions, culture, and contributions made by the First Nations, Inuit and Métis people. I encourage you to open the pages of the book on display here at the back of the atrium to fully appreciate the hard work of Canadian Geographic and the more than 50 Indigenous contributors, and as Jill said, more than 100 other contributors throughout the works. As a publisher, I can attest that this is a feat of organizational wizardry. The Atlas is a remarkable accomplishment. Kids Camp Press is very proud to be associated with this project, which is more than two years in the making. And we've just come on board a few months ago as the global distributor of the Atlas. Jill and I met well on Canadian Heritage's cultural mission to China. We decided that we should gather our teams, two of Canadian's iconic publishers, to determine what we might tackle together. We were blown away by the Indigenous Peoples Atlas of Canada, and we knew that with our extensive sales distribution and marketing reach, we would be able to ensure that the Indigenous Peoples Atlas of Canada is made available to schools, libraries, and bookstores, not just here in Canada, but around the world. Our friends and partners at Hachette, Manda, uh, Nelson Education, and Good Minds are here this morning, and we look forward to working with you in that regard. It's wonderful to see so many of you here today. As Charlene touched upon, the Atlas is much more than an Atlas, in fact. It's a multi-platform resource. Aaron Salas from Struck Creative. Aaron, do you want to put up your hand? 
uh, joins us here from Calgary today. His company is a developer of the app and some of the other digital materials. Please look for Aaron afterwards. He's offered to uh, help guide you through the app. It's one which allows us to search land acknowledgements for any spot in Canada. All Canadians should have the IPAC app on their phone right next to the weather app. And finally, one of the most exciting components of the Indigenous Peoples Atlas of Canada is the giant floor map, which will be officially unveiled momentarily. The map is a resource for schools and libraries and really any organization that wishes to borrow it from Canadian Geographic through their website. The maps are huge. Some are the size of a small gymnasium. And though you will recognize the shape of Canada as we know it, you will not see the provincial boundary lines that we have all been taught. Instead, you will see the treaty boundaries and you will learn about the various indigenous language group areas. And perhaps most significantly, you will see how many First Nations, Inuit and Métis communities, towns and cities there are across this vast land. It's a very moving and humbly, humbling experience. And I invite you all to experience it be one of the first here this morning. And, uh, sorry. Um, please do stay afterwards, enjoy the experience of the map, find out more about the Atlas, and talk to the many contributors who are here this morning. Thank you for coming and enjoying this celebration with us this morning. Thank you, Lisa. And now, ladies and gentlemen, as it has been alluded to, as we've already cleared this area, we're now about to unveil this giant map, as it has been pointed out. I'd also like to say thank you, Nyawa and Miigwech, for attending this morning. Please stay and, uh, as pointed out, view the map up close. And both uh, educators from Canadian Geographic, Sarah and Michelle, will be happy to answer any questions you may have. Onigiha.
Dosa, I got Nikum. Dosa, I got Nikum. Dosa, I got Nikum. 